Hi and welcome to this edition of Back in History. I do hope you are doing fine, as always. In this edition, we bring to you the history of the birth, education, military career, participation in coups, arrest, trial, conviction, and execution of Lieutenant Colonel Boka Sukadimka, one of the earliest foreign trained military officers of Nigeria. Now, the man Dimka was from present-day Plateau states. He was born in May 1940. He was one of the luckiest young men in Nigeria who was sent abroad for professional military training in the early 60s. Dimka was sent to Australia where he was trained at the Australian Army Officer Cadet School, Potsy. He had classmates from Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, the Philippines, and the Pacific Islands. His career prospect was very bright, and he was a likable fellow and very strong in physical education and training. On completion of his training, he was commissioned to the rank of second lieutenant for the Nigerian army. Dimka came back to Nigeria and was deployed to duty. He went about his work smoothly with so much prospect ahead of him. But in no time, Dimka got himself involved in a couple of things. He participated in the July 1966 counter coup that hosted General Agui Ronsi. Gawon then became the new head of state but overstayed in power having spent nine years without any hope of transition of power to civilians. A coup was then planned to remove him. Dimka was brought into the coup plan. In 1975, the coup was carried out against Gawon and Gawon was successfully removed from office, paving way for Motala Muhammad to take over the reins of power. At this time, Dimka had moved through the ranks and became a lieutenant colonel. He was qualified for a couple of military appointments and positions and also had a number of years ahead of him. In exactly 200 days from when Motala was sworn into office, Dimka did what was completely unexpected. He conspired with fellow soldiers, dressed up in native attires, concealed their guns in the native ways, otherwise known as Babariga, waited by a petrol station in Lagos for Motala's vehicle to pass to work, and when the vehicle stopped at a traffic jam, waiting for traffic to clear, Dimka and his men opened a volley of bullets on Motala's vehicle and eliminated Motala on the spot. Motala's ADC, Akintunde, was also eliminated. Dimka then moved to Radio Nigeria and made a national broadcast with a view to having a regime change, but his efforts were thwarted by soldiers led by Colonel Ibrahim Babangida, who went into the radio station to stop the broadcast and disable Dimka. Dimka escaped from the radio station and ran to Joss. This is where Dimka's bright military career took a nosedive. His life and career was not going to be the same again. The military made broadcast on Radio Nigeria every 15 minutes calling on Nigerian citizens to report Dimka to any police station or military post if they find him. Dimka was also listening to radio and thus decided to escape. He left Jos and traveled to Afikbo in present-day Bonyi states. He was a very smart man and was thus able to beat the roadblocks without being identified. He arrived at Afikbo safely and checked into a hotel. 
The name of the hotel was Friendship Hotel. Before the Biafran War and after the war, Demka served in Afikbo and had a lot of friends there. One of the friends he had was a lady by name Ugo. On his arrival at Friendship Hotel, Demka discussed with the manager of the hotel to go to Ugo's house and call her for him. At that time, there were no mobile phones and so communication was not as easy as it is today. The manager did as was requested and in no time, Ugo arrived at the hotel to be with Demka. She spent the night with him but while there, information leaked to the military that Demka was in the hotel and in no time, the hotel was invaded by soldiers. As the soldiers knocked the doors of the hotel one by one, Demka sensed danger and escaped through the toilet window and escaped into the nearby bush, leaving Ugo in the room. From the bush, he crossed over to the road, boarded a taxi and escaped. While in the taxi, Dimka heard further announcements on radio for anyone to arrest him and hand him over. He also cited several roadblocks and at some point decided to voluntarily surrender himself to a police constable at one of the roadblocks and introduced himself to him as Dimka. He said, I am Dimka, the man you have been looking for. The police then arrested him and handed him over to the nearby military checkpoint. Dimka was then moved to Lagos where he was tried in a military court martial and convicted for treason. Throughout the trial, Dimka did not deny his involvement in the coup. He was then executed by firing squad. This brought to an end the life and times of Dimka, who had the benefit of foreign military training in an era when such opportunity was rare. As at 1975, when he did what he did, he was already a lieutenant colonel and could have possibly moved up to the highest rank in the military. It is worthy of note that most of the officers of his rank that were in the military at the time later became leaders and rulers of Nigeria in successive military administrations. Dimka was born in 1940 and at the age of 35, he was already a lieutenant colonel with high prospects ahead of him. Many thanks for watching this episode of Back in History and do remember to follow this page or subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.